Grab your popcorn and goobers, it's time for Motherhood in Hollywood with your host, Heather Brooker. This is a crude prude's perspective on being a full-time mom in showbiz. So hold on to your butts, here's Heather! Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 4 of Motherhood in Hollywood. Today on the show, my friend Claudia Dolph stops by from geekgirlauthority.com. And uh, we chat a little bit about superheroes, mostly Thor. Ah, Thor. Woo, just had to have a little moment there. And we talk about sports teams, we talk about movies and television, all things that we find interesting and exciting. And I know that you guys will too, at least I hope you do anyway, because we certainly have a lot of fun talking about it. And I also just want to point out to some people out there that this show, even though it is called Motherhood in Hollywood, is not just moms involved here. That's right. This show is going to cover all kinds of aspects of the Hollywood industry and social issues that I want to discuss. Um, Basically, it's anything I feel like doing that week or talking to that uh, or talking about that week, rather. Um, Yeah, because it's motherhood in Hollywood. And I am the motherhood part of motherhood in Hollywood. So no, not everybody on the show has to be a mom. So calm down, dudes. Um, We're going to actually have some dads on here and some guys who uh, are by their very nature, not moms. So (laughs) there you go. Uh, I hope that made sense. If not, fuck it. I'm not recording it again. Um, Anyway, really quick before I uh, forget, make sure you go on Facebook and like my Facebook page, Motherhood in Hollywood, to give us a search there for keep up with the latest and uh, on the podcast and all of the giveaways we're doing and things happening in the Motherhood in Hollywood land. And also on Twitter, MIH Podcast. And oh gosh, what else are we on? We're on Instagram. All the social media things, all the things the kids are doing. Tumblr, check us out there and on Pinterest. Oh, and before I forget, make sure you leave us a rating and a review on iTunes because you will be entered to win our special Honest Company Bundle giveaway. It's a bath time bundle with all kinds of awesome natural bath time products. But more importantly, you will get a Motherhood in Hollywood tote bag. That's right. Uh, Right now, it's a -a one-of-a-kind tote bag. So uh, you don't want to miss that unless I decide to make more and then uh, it'll just be one of hundreds that I've made. So make sure you leave a rating and review on iTunes. Must be 18 or older to win and be in the United States, please. And uh, the last day to enter the uh, giveaway for the Honest Company Bundle and Tote Bag is on September 15th. And that day I will pick all of the names from the ratings and reviews and draw them out of a hat and contact the winner and let you know what you've won. So please take a moment to review. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm doing this show all by myself, just with the help of my wonderfully supportive friends who are volunteering their time to come and talk to me. So any help and support you guys could give would be much appreciated, even if it's in the form of just a review. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. And uh, yeah, that's uh, about it for all the pitches. Now, let's move on to the interview with Miss Claudia. All right, everyone. Joining me today is my good friend Claudia Dolph from Geek Girl Authority podcast, website, podcast, media, all of it, media, all of media, geek needs. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Tell me a little bit more about Geek Girl Authority. How did it start? Who do you work with? Um, well, my partner in crime is Audrey Kearns. We also have a couple more people on board right now. Matt Key and Jenny Flack, who just I had love a that baby. Guy. Yeah, Matt Key, he's, he's okay. <laughs> he's cool. um, He's sort of our Marvel um, expert in residence. Yeah, I heard your um, episode where you had him on as your expert. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Audrey and I, um, last year? No, two years ago, we had the idea. Um, ha- after some white wine at Comic Con, <laughs> the best ideas come after the a best little bit and of wine. The worst, <laughs> and the worst, and that's the worst. True. Like babies. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean it. I love you. <laughs> um, and it, I, I, the idea actually started as a, a book club um, for a science fiction um, nerds like us. Oh. Um, so that's how it, and then it just sort of organically evolved into what it is today, which is a pop online geek culture websites Mm -hmm. we host um podcasts and people are blogging and 
articles, breaking news, all sorts of stuff. So it's like a one-stop shop for all your geeky needs. For all your geeky needs. Yeah. And, and you host, there's more than one podcast. Yeah, on we host several. We have, well, right now we're hosting um, Pole Cats and then Audrey's Kneel Before Odd. So hers is a one-on-one interview mm-hmm. with... Um, what she calls geek patriots mm-hmm. um and then poll cats is where we talk about you know very important matters <laughs> like you know binge binge worthy shows and stuff like that and then we pull the best whatever we're talking about and then fans can go online and vote for their favorite things and now does it have to be like geek related can it be like like i just binged grace and frankie the other day or yeah frankie grace? yeah <laughs> or whatever it is. i just binged watch that and i'm no. like this is a great show well i mean that's the fun thing about being geeky it can be about anything not just like science fiction or whatever it's comedy you know we've, we've talked about sports all sorts of things so it's whatever you know you're passionate about i was gonna say isn't the essence of sort of being that geek or a nerd is like you find the one thing yes. that you're just really yeah. into and passionate yeah. about and obsess over and yeah all that. yeah absolutely and we're all big sports nerds as well so we've talked about maybe oh. delving into that area i was gonna say like you go for it as i could not freaking I might, football I season is coming up i though. love football i love football i'm excited for football season but i'm not maybe it's because la doesn't have a, a team yeah but it's so hard for me to get into other national teams because i'm from oklahoma and we didn't have an nfl team but don't you i, I feel like i see your your post on the facebook i post like about the college Cowboys. stuff yeah, yeah. The, the oklahoma state cowboys because yeah. that's where we went to school but we don't like because oklahoma didn't have like a national like an nfl team yeah there's no the closest were the dallas cowboys which yeah. i know you're a big fan of yeah. um but the that was the closest or the kansas city chiefs you know? yeah but it's not uh the big football the big football as opposed to the little football i don't know <laughs> Um, they're all the same size. Well, like Audrey, you know, my partner Audrey, she is a huge college football fan, which I am not, and I'm a big NFL fan. So we're sort of, we've talked about like sort of. Maybe Did your college have a football team? Um, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts? <laughs> no, no. See, and that's probably why. <laughs> I can't believe you guys weren't suiting up. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> That would be the most amazing and well produced (laughs) football game ever. It'd be all like stage combat y and like not real football. And there'd be like glitter explosions. (laughs) Yeah, their teams would be like, who are these people? But they're so well choreographed. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God, I would watch that. That should be a sketch. We should write that. That would be hilarious. The American Dramatic Academy, American Academy of Dramatic Dramatic Arts. Arts. Football? Football versus the AMTA. Oh no. Uh, American Musical Academy. There you yeah. go. Oh my God. So they're singing on the other side. It would be like, oh gosh, it'd be Glee. Glee. Yeah. No. It would be, so they did it. Yeah. All right. Damn. Next idea. <laughs> Fucking television stealing our ideas years in advance. Um, no, I do love sports. I think that would be great. I think it would be interesting to see what kind of response you would get from sports geeks. Yeah, I wonder mm-hmm. because I noticed like if I because come football season I'll be tweeting and hate tweeting other teams like crazy <laughs> and I notice my Twitter followers start to like they drop go off. away oh, no. and I'm like no I still love my sci-fi stuff and all that but I I am very passionate about my can Dallas Cowboys can you be a geek yes. and a sports lover yes right. right I mean I think yeah, I, I mean, like I think I'm proving that. Yeah, yeah, you definitely do. But I think a lot of people though think it's like an oxymoron. Like you can't really love Star Trek and also love football, or or even or getting football. closer to that. There's mm-hmm. always like you can't love Star Trek and Star Wars, which I do. I know. Who and doesn't? people people freak out about that though. You, it's like you have to pick one or the other. And I'm like, what? One's my head and one's my heart. Right. Can I tell you that when I told Chris you were coming on the show, oh, he's such a jerk. He goes, do you need me to like brush you up on any of the latest like sci-fi stuff so you have stuff to talk about with no, her? No, but you're a big sci-fi yeah. geek. Yeah, and like- I was like, um, go fuck yourself. I know <laughs> what's going on. And I was like, I read everyone's tweets about the Comic-Con. Like, I love Star Trek. I'm a big Next Generation fan. Yes. Like, if I'm going to pick a Star Trek, that's the yes, one. Yes, me too. Um, But I... The uh, there's so many other branches now of sci-fi, especially on television, like all the BBC shows that are coming out. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm forgetting the name of the show. Uh, I wrote not I Robot. I am Robot. Or mm. there's it's a new one. Oh, Chris is gonna kill me because oh, he wanted. To- is it the one that Aaron Takahashi is on, Mr. Yes, Robot? Mr. Robot. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Aaron's on that. Yeah. And um, uh. It's really good. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. And I d- was not expecting that. And it's so, you're fine. And I was. I just punched the mic. You just punched the mic. 
Um, I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. I was like, because mm, sometimes there's those so shows much. Are, yeah. 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 And it just seems like lately there's been an explosion of those more independent sci-fi type shows mm-hmm. on smaller networks like AMC, yeah. know, TNT, um, even Netflix FX. and Amazon Prime to yeah. get some smaller or just Amazon. Yeah. Amazon Prime's the, yeah. <laughs> the free shipping. <laughs> the free shipping. <laughs> the free movies. But you do have to sign up for Amazon Prime, I yes. think, to get, yeah, to get, the get those shows. Yeah. 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 Um, but there's so much and like not all of it is going to be great. But so mm-hmm. far, a lot of it is. A lot of it is. And yeah. One thing that a lot of them have in common is that they're all British. Uh huh. What do you think that's yeah. about? Why are they taking all of our. So good. I don't know. So I, I think that. I think. What I find myself attract when I when I'm attracted to in British shows is well you know the writing's really good but also mm-hmm. the casting to me it's is amazing great. they're real people they don't mess around with like they all have to look like models and right. be beautiful and stuff like they totally. cast fantastic actors who look like real people they, they and that are doing parts. the yeah that are supposed to be the characters that they are whether it's a detective or whatever yeah. or this or that like That's something i never even thought about because i kept thinking like why am i so drawn to this particular yeah. show or why do yeah. i like this particular show and it's yeah, that makes total sense. I'm like, sense. she looks like a real girl. Like, yeah. I believe that she is really yeah. in this, this situation. Like, she's a, like, if somebody is, like, down and out and, you know, like, mm-hmm. uh, over here, they're still going to look beautiful, I perfectly know. manicured, the whole so thing. Gross. They're they're going to look like real, you know, real life people with real life, uh, with a real life yeah. body that with looks like a normal body. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one thing here. I feel like some producers and some, you know, showrunners are trying to move in that direction. Sure, but Orange is the New Black, I think, is the biggest. Orange is the New Black for um, sure. Yeah, those look like that. real. Yeah, those are real ladies. women, and they're all different shapes and sizes yeah. and colors, and you know, yeah. like it's it's great. I love watching that show. Yeah, for that. that's a great example. Um, but the major networks, though, still have a long way to go before they're embracing that. It's so interesting to me, though. I mean, it's, I feel like it's a, so fear-based. You know, we can't change. We can't do yeah. this. But it's like all these other... You see that you they can, and these other little places are very successful at it and have... I think, though, the networks kind of have are limited like they just can't do that Mm -hmm. because the middle america i hate to like stereotype because we're both from the middle of america Mm -hmm. um the middle section of the country like there's just people who don't want to see what orange is the new black yes being offered on their channels yeah but my thing is like is it because everybody's still like on analog tv and you only get your four major network or three major networks you know cbs nbc abc fox is it because people only get those channels and they can't turn away and watch something else um or are the networks just afraid to try i don't i mean maybe a little bit of both i mean i think most people i know even out in middle america have like you know base or at least cable with Mm -hmm. like a thousand different channels Mm -hmm. on it but maybe they're just watching dynasty or something i don't know oh my god dynasty (laughs) 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 what (laughs) um that's awesome I used to dance around my living room to the theme song of Dallas when it would come <gasps> that on. That was a great theme song. Oh, that was a great that was great opening credits too. And, and then you like know South Four Grand. I know, and they're just like a, you know it's a big chopper shot coming in. <laughs> yes. over it. I'm like, I want to go there. And it was so tiny. If you ever went there, it was like hey, You been? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, this is it? Yeah, it's hmm. a tiny little ranch. It's teeny. Um, you know it's a good theme song if we remember it still to this still day. Still to this day, and I when they said that they were going to be redoing Dallas, did I was you like, ever watch no. that? No, I was mad I, out of out of pure protest for like them raping my childhood. I was like, I will not watch this show. Just I watched stop it a couple it. of times. You know, again, very pretty people. Of course, that all look like you know, know the original Dallas though did, was all about like big, pretty Texas Southern people, but sure. like they still looked like real individual women and, then, and unique. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, still the new Dallas was all I don't know. They I couldn't tell one from the other. TNA and like, high but, I'm old. Oh, but I'm old. Like they all lady. look like to me <laughs> these kids. <laughs> That's racist against young people. <laughs> All these white kids. <laughs> right. Uh, they'll just, there's just so many new ideas mm-hmm. nowadays. I don't know why they need to keep remaking stuff. So many remakes. Just like. Why? Every two seconds. And, 
you know. I think I read somewhere they might be remaking Goonies or something. Yes, but the thing with Goonies is that the original cast is okay, all that in I'm it. Okay with. That I'm okay You know, with. and I'll see that for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I don't know. How many Why? times is Superman being remade? Oh my gosh. Or Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man. Man. Sp- Spider-Man's worse, you know. It's just like. Why, why do they keep doing that, do you think? Because like I was asking Chris the other day, because Chris is my go-to on all kind of geeky things and mm-hmm. like nerdy things because he's a big nerd. Yeah. And I love him. But he knows, like, he reads all the websites, you know, he goes to your website, and he's checking stuff out. And I'm like, why do they keep redoing Spider-Man every few years? And people still go. And he goes, that's why. Because that's why, because they're still making still money. Yeah, yeah, and especially with the boom of Marvel right now, it's yeah. like, well, we can't, we gotta, you know, have Spider-Man around. That's yeah. gonna be huge. He said they've got stories mapped out for, like, the next decade. The yes. storyline. Yeah, if you Marvel. saw their slate, it's just, like, boom, 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 boom. Wow. But they're doing a great job, though, in tying everything in. I feel like DC's, DC's like... DC's struggling, aren't they? They're struggling. But I'm, they're changing, like... DC is, like, changing you know, the characters from, like, their core. Like, Superman isn't, like, the good guy that we all grew up with from the 30s, you know, yeah. like... I don't know. It's a whole... That's a whole other... Um, the preview I saw, the trailer I saw for Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. or Superman versus Batman. Batman yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it, <laughs> whatever. Um, it just didn't look very good. Like I was like, why? Superman is the hero. Yeah. Batman has is a hero, but he's got a darker edge to him. But he's yeah. still a hero. And everyone's like, no, they're just laying the groundwork. They're just setting it up for this movie. And I'm like, why is why is this the movie you're doing that with? And you're laying the groundwork with this movie like this is something i feel like should come a couple movies from now maybe like this yeah. shouldn't be our first introduction i don't know did you see man of steel yeah what did you with think Henry about Cavill? that yeah oh I just, I, he was so dreamy it was a terrible was movie ter- i couldn't finish but it he's so hot i couldn't I, finish it i again with casting amy adams was so not the right choice for no that. i'm just like Every fiber in my being was just like, I, what? Yes. And it was like Lois Lane. Like, she's a bad bitch. I feel like Margot Kidder should just keep Could playing just her. Do it. Yeah. Like, why like, doesn't she just come back and just keep doing it? Because I've heard she's kind of nuts. Well, she, yeah. But that's kind of cool, though. <laughs> I mean, like, different. now she's just off the rails. Off the rails. Like, but that might make it even more interesting. Yeah. Like, knows? some kind of punk Lois Lane. She just comes <laughs> back with a mission. But who would you cast? Who would you cast as Lois Lane? As a you Lois think? Lane type? Right today. Yeah. Um,. Maggie Gyllenhaal, maybe mm-hmm. she might be kind of fierce. Um, gosh, who's got like a tough as nails? I like, yeah, like who's kind of like funny and can be sarcastic and tough and you know, mm-hmm. Whitney Cummings, maybe I don't know. She might be a little, I want to say old because God, then I'm that asshole. Well, I mean, like that's the thing. It's like I would have loved to see Sandra Bullock as Lois oh, Lane sure. at some point, but they're sh- they're gonna be like she's, she's fifty, she old, can't yeah. do it. And I'm like she still looks like she's like she thirty. Does. Guys, thank you plastic surgery. Yeah. Um, thank you Botox. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's true. Like I'm trying. I'm sure the minute we stop recording, I'll think of a hundred people. I know, but but I, I I think about this a lot, and yeah. I don't know who I would put in that as Lois Lane. As Lois I would Lane. not. I don't think Amy Adams would not even be in the top like fifty. And I don't know if it's just because I have you know such like I love Margot Kidder mm-hmm. and those that those yeah. Superman movies so much. I the what was great about the essence of the first ones is that she was so just like all about her job and she yes. didn't want any part of romance or anything like yeah. that and then she found herself as this hardworking businesswoman sort of getting swept up literally into, literally, literally yeah. into this like love affair with yeah. the superman like every girl's dream like, yeah who are you dating superman yeah oh and, yeah and he was also <laughs> such a perfect superman too such a perfect, was just like, I, I thought henry cavill did a really good job i don't think he brought anything that was particularly amazing to it but then again i don't think it wasn't it, an amazing movie it wasn't yeah. you know i think aside from um robert downey jr uh who really came in with iron man and oh, man. just owned that character yeah. and was like brought his personality his sass everything and you're like Oh, you're Iron Man. Yeah. Obviously. Well, I think Marvel's done a really great job with casting. I mean, yeah. Chris Evans is, you know, he's Captain America. Like, he is oh, perfect, perfect for casting. Yeah. I watched him, uh, like, a clip of something the other day where he was in Not Another Teen Movie or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, is that Chris Evans? He looked totally different. Real scrawny. Yeah. And, like, but he was supposed to still be a jock. It was very weird. 
Um, but Chris Hemsworth, oh my Perfect as Thor. And that was a movie that I went into Ugh. with no expectations. Yeah. I didn't know. I was like, eh, I don't know. He looks like a pretty boy. And like, yeah. This one. And he, he was great. great. And it was such a good movie. Such yeah. a good movie. Like, they are just oh killing God. it. Chris um, loves to make fun of me. I keep talking about Chris. I should have him on to, to talk <laughs> also. He should have been here with us to talk about all the geek stuff. But um, when we were watching um, the Avengers, the first Avengers yeah. movie. Maybe it was the second one. Um, there's a scene where they've got Loki in the plane and they're taking him back That's to the first one, yeah. jail or whatever, the yeah. first one. And um, all of a sudden then lightning hits the plane and I literally go, woo! <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the theater and Chris was like what the and he looks at me and I'm like Thor's coming <laughs> guys Thor Bye, guys <laughs> Thor and like Chris was like literally put his hand in his head and he's like oh what's wrong you're so embarrassing and I'm like shh uh, that's like, hilarious I'm, I'm such an old married lady because I literally got like a boner on I was like Ooh, Thor guys Thor. Ooh. he's a good looking one a really sexy <laughs> alien so is Loki though man that's really? Good, no. You can have Loki. Oh, I'll, I'll He's take too him. He's pale. He's too pale. Loki. I love the pale. You do love the pale. <laughs> I do. Um, Loki no Kai. <laughs> Loki no Kai. Um, is the 4400 coming back? Because I'm all about that movement. We well, should talk about who your boyfriend. Okay, my boyfriend's Kai Eric Your Erickson. lover. My lover, my partner. I know. Yeah. So I, I'm really old to say boyfriend, I think. And we've my been friend together Tunisia for... says man friend. <laughs> and I'm like, that's But I so feel weird. like that's a one night stand kind of a, <laughs> this is my man friend. I just see him friend. after 2 a.m. He could be your boyfriend. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, we're we're in our mid to late 30s. Yeah. Guys. Um, Ish. Ish. But and we've been together a long time, so it yeah. sounds weird to say boyfriend. boyfriend. But it also sounds weird, weird to, to say, say partner. It's my common law partner. <laughs> like I know, so strange. Um, but it's Kai Eric Erickson. He was on the forty four hundred. Yay! Lots of other things as well. But um, another Chris is another huge fan of that show. He's like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if they brought that back? I think it'd be a perfect show to bring it back. So great. Although spoilers, Uh-oh. Kai died. So oh, no. <laughs> well then, fuck it. We don't want to bring it back. But I mean, I'm sure there, there'd be a way, to bring, way to bring them back. back. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, there's this movement on online right yeah. now on Twitter and stuff to get the show back, like asking Netflix to bring it or one of those online, uh, which would be really, really cool. I wonder where that's coming from. Is it Kai? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Kai? I don't know. I mean, there's a whole, there's a, there's an idea um, and a thought and I, I, you know, I think a pretty strong belief that um, Heroes was stolen from the 4400. That idea was stolen oh, from them because yeah. there's a whole backstory about sure, that. Sure. But um, they're bringing Heroes back. Um, yeah, Heroes Reborn or something. Yeah. Or new Day or Dawn of the New Dawn Hero. Dawn of the New Hero. <laughs> We should cast. <laughs> we should name TV shows. Like they, guys, they we should just so. hire us to name TV shows. We got it. They just bring us in just for that. We're like we can't think of anybody. Let's call Heather. We and don't Connor. know how to write, but we can come up with great great names. titles. Um, well, uh, I hope that works. That I don't. Yeah, great. I don't know where it's coming from necessarily. Mm-hmm. I don't know who started it, but it'd be great. I think yeah. there was a fan who sent like a, a petition around wanting 4,400 signatures oh. to get it going. He got the signatures. I think you might need more for yeah. Netflix. I might be like, oh, okay, Maybe. thanks for the yeah. Fourth. yeah, but um, Saturday, July 18th, if you are on Twitter, mm-hmm. you should follow at Kai Erickson, I think, or like any Is of it his the, full name, Kai Eric Erickson. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but out. all of those guys at Joel Gretsch, at Rich Kahan, um, all these people that were on the show, they're going to be doing a live question and answer on Saturday. Oh. Um, so look that up and you can like say, hey, when's your show coming back? That'd be so great. Because then if Kai, they film up in Canada though, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. And then you would have to move to Canada. Well, we're trying. I so, don't like that. No bueno. Well, I mean, it's going to take, it's going to take me a while to get up there yeah yeah i just everything's going to canada and england it's like nobody wants to be or louisiana or atlanta like it's everywhere Everywhere else else but yeah yeah um I read something that said, oh, they've, you know, given L.A. filmmakers a tax break. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So they're going to be filming more here. And I'm like, great. Where? Yeah. Uh-huh. But I mean, who knows if that's true? I mean, I think the business is changing so mm-hmm. much, you know, and how they distribute things and where things are airing and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So you don't necessarily have to be in yeah. uh, one in you know, like L.A. or whatever. I um, I just did a show for Hulu. One mm-hmm. of their new, sh- their like very first show um, called Hand of God. 
And, oh, yeah. Um, apparently, the way they did it was they released, like, a pilot to the to Hulu subscribers or what viewers and, or excuse me, not Hulu, it's Amazon. Okay. Um, Hulu, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, To Amazon. Yeah, they released it to uh, Amazon Prime members and everybody could go on and they vote on their favorite ones. Yeah. Because they released a few. Like Man on High Castle, they did that with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that, but you guys should watch it. Is it great? It's great, yeah. They did that one and they did a couple of others and everybody voted this is one of the ones they wanted to see more of. Yeah. So I was like, thank you. Yeah. Now I'm on it. I get to play a reporter. It's like a giant it. testing room. Yeah. It's great. And it's so, I, I, what I wonder though is how they're going to monitor or be able to get the stats for who's watching. Like how, right. or how do you keep track of advertising? Like how are they making money? Basically. Right. I don't know. I that's that's something I Like with Hulu is it subscriptions? I, Netflix subscriptions? I don't know. And I know Netflix has a way to track it. I mean, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. But I just don't know how. But um cuz I'm not um I just said I guess I don't care that much yeah <laughs> I'm not well, running I'm not running honest. I'm not running those companies um, yeah that's true but um because even like Yahoo's getting into the game Yahoo's producing yes. original content and it's like fantastic that's great like, I also but- think it's great though because you know I think one of the what was one of the arguments from big studios and producers and or whatever right, right when they were trying to figure out the online mm-hmm. the, all the new media stuff yeah and they were like well we just don't know how to track it so we don't know how to pay people and i'm like yeah. but you can track it yeah i mean everything that's done online can be tracked yeah if there's anything i've learned from setting up this podcast yes um I can track down to the country yes. and the city who's yes. listening, downloading my podcast. So, so keep that in mind. Yeah. So it's Japan. <laughs> I'm watching Chinese you. Chinese people. <laughs> I'm watching you too. <laughs> yeah. So you can track you these can things track and that. you can pay them, yeah. pay artists for their work. Yeah. The whole new media contracting for SAG was got a little sketchy and i don't know that they fully i think it's still like it out because yeah. i feel like what i got paid was a little like wah, wah, mm-hmm. but um yeah. also i'm not a huge star so right the bigger stars make it you know compensated better so i'm sure yeah i'm sure that's the dumbest statement i've ever made <laughs> <laughs> they may upset. make I they don't. might make more money than me probably probably not we're all on equal I playing field yes i'm quite sure that we're all artists, <laughs> we're all artists. <laughs> um but oh going back to amazon because mm-hmm. we love amazon yeah um but you guys should check out man on high castle that's another good one too all right is that sci-fi um kind of it's based on a philip k dick novel okay um partner audrey and her husband brian told me about it first of all and then now we have a good friend who is on the show but awesome. it's basically um had we lost world war ii and um we're now split into japan and germany and mm. that's it um oh, so it's wow. like east coast is german and west coast is japan you oh know so God. japanese and so Terrifying. it's like it's very cool concept and in, in, it's and also not entirely that far fetched. <laughs> like something like that could yeah. happen. There's so much division in yeah. the world today between like um <clears throat> excuse me, like religion, political yes. beliefs, just Yeah, like everything's so polarized right now. Everybody's yeah. so polarized yeah. that honestly it could escalate down the road into something like a worldwide civil war kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, is that a thing? A worldwide, or is it just a world war? It, that would just be a world war. I mean, I think what's going on in the Middle East, like that's yeah. civil war stuff. You know, if they just keep it to themselves. Yeah. If we get into it, <laughs> that's true. If we get into yeah, it, then to <laughs> yeah. Although I feel like we are into it. Oh my god, we cannot talk about no. politics because <laughs> I am not informed enough to know <laughs> what I'm talking about, and I'll probably say something like, "We're like, winning that war, right?" <laughs> And some dummy will tweet me like, you fucking idiot. It'll be like um, Clueless when yeah. Cher talks about um, letting immigrants into the United States. And she was like, it does not say RSVP on the Statue of Liberty. Right. It does not say RSVP. That's true. We need more fun movies like that. God, I miss it. Do you know that that's having a 20th anniversary this year? <gasps> that makes me feel so old. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my God. But that's still in my top five movies. Really? That's I your love top five? It. What I can are watch others? it all the time. Um... Oh, no gosh. pressure, but say it immediately. Go. God, I have so many favorite movies, though. You can't. Um, like, can I do my top five horrible movies yeah. that I hate? Okay, number one right now is Serena, and I'm just going to keep Serena? talking about it. Serena. What the hell is that? It's a movie that 
came out not too long ago starring Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper off of their like, you know, we do everything great together. We have great chemistry. So we're going to make this movie called Serena. Okay. Um, It, is, it obviously did well because I've no never one's heard, heard of it. it. Oh but God. I heard about it when they were making it. And then I just never, and then never happened again. And then mm-hmm. it popped up on Netflix the other night. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. Oh, no. It is bad. The worst. It is the worst. Okay, my favorite bad movie is Showgirls. Oh, yeah. Right now, this is replacing sure. it because <laughs> so I watched Showgirls it again. Showgirls got bumped? Yeah, Showgirls got bumped. I watched it because I watched it again last night. Mm-hmm. It is, I mean, if you went and saw like um, a bad high school play, Tennessee Williams yeah. play, like the Southern accent, it's set in North Carolina. The so, accents are terrible. The this writing is, what Serena is, is. Yeah, this oh. is Serena. The writing is uncomfortable. Ooh. And, it, but it's hilarious. But it got made. Somehow, got made. somebody how? gave them money. And how did no one at any point, like, was anybody at the, like watching dailies and going, oh, oh. this is bad. <laughs> well, it's like with Aloha. You know the whole scandal with Aloha and yeah. them putting Emma Stone in as an Asian character, yes. and nobody going. So it's like somebody was going, maybe she could play Asian. Yeah, yeah. she's got Are big you weird eyes. Like, like, just get an Asian actress. There's millions, millions of them, and there's so and there's lots of really great, great Asian ones. actors. But like, yeah. no, yeah, that whole thing was a little appalling. But that I get happens mad, all you know? the time. It happens all the time. I mean, I get mad when they cast like um, the wacky neighbor or the funny best friend or whatever as some like skinny, tiny, you know, yeah. like never eating. She's bitch. not as pretty. So. Right. She's wearing <laughs> she's glasses. She's not a model. Yeah. <laughs> so she's obviously the wacky best friend. Yeah. But I'm like, bitch, if you look at every hot girl's best friend, it's a fat girl. It's... <laughs> It's literally like the chunky gal who is the wingman, you know? Yeah. It's the Amy Schumer's or yeah. whatever. Although not, Amy Schumer is not fat. I just want to state that for the record. She is not fat. She's not fat, but I think she's owning that she's a real life girl with she's a real life body size. that's yeah. normal. And it's, you know, which I love. And she's like, you know, I love that, that it's been going around, but I love that she yeah. said I'm 160 pounds and I can still catch a dick. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be r- real right. thin to like. Right be attractive I, I also that's, but i hate though that she refers to herself as being fat or overweight and i'm like well i think that's because that's not. i mean i think i mean hopefully you think she's like reflecting the what I, people are throwing yes. at her yeah absolutely I and i think in this business people are probably constantly going you need to lose weight you they need told to lose she had weight. to lose you weight for lose train wreck weight. which they, is crazy to yeah. me you know so she's like i dieted like crazy and i lost weight yeah and uh, and i'm like and like it's why you're starring in the movie you right say, fuck you right this is me but and what i mean like yeah. so be healthy i want yeah. everyone to be healthy yeah but to to that note to be so skinny and to lose weight and to i mean mm-hmm. not only is that mentally unhealthy that's going to be physically unhealthy for you as well if you're yeah. not putting the proper nutrients in your body right and right. smoking chain smoking i saw an actress the other day who i love i was like man she's so cute and tiny she was like chain smoking. I was See, like, that's, that's what why. They do. And yeah. that's what I used to do. I was really? like crazy chain smoker. Ooh, and I was beautiful. So <laughs> don't do <laughs> you it. Still don't are do beautiful. it. You stop it right <laughs> don't, now. Don't give yourself lung you guys, cancer. Claudia is gorgeous. <laughs> she is brown. <laughs> <laughs> she is tan and gorgeous and tall and lean. So don't listen to her. No, and I'm totally joking. Don't smoke and that's, that's awful just smoke stuff. Smoke the doobies. Just, yeah, just smoke your weed. I'm amazed at how many friends I have that smoke weed constantly. Constantly? That, that just wake and bake and go on with their lives. Still? I can't do it. Still, that's my thing. Chris, Chris and I were like, how is this still happening? Some people can function that way. I mean, like, okay, I, no. I'm i not no. a good um, person on the weed because I just go to sleep. Yeah. You know, like, I'm just maybe like. Maybe you're just not trying the right weed. Maybe I'm just tired. Maybe you need a giggly <laughs> weed. Yeah. I also feel like that was something everybody did in college and then maybe a little while after college and then you go. Nah, people do it every once in a while. Yeah. But I mean, no, like, know anybody who friends does. who literally do it every day. Are they vaping? They're, no, they're just oh. like. Just like Getting smoking out their bong. It's like fucking smoking in their <laughs> living room. Listen, if you could, if you, that's, if that helps you, because some people it does help. Maybe mm. you having, maybe do they have anxiety issues or a, no, a coma? <laughs> maybe they just have weed issues. I, I'm like, <laughs> I know they say it's not addictive, but I feel like if you can't stop doing it every day, then maybe it is a little addictive. Or maybe it's another issue. Maybe you know, it's just like, like smoking, where you, like smoking regular cigarettes. Like you just yeah. I mean, I, I will say that I, 
I don't think that I ever was physically addicted to cigarettes. And I just cold, I just stopped cold when I stopped smoking them. Mm -hmm. But my issues were beyond that, you know, like I had eating disorder stuff from when I was a dancer and all that kind of stuff. And that's Mm -hmm. why I smoked. And as soon as I was like, worked through that shit and Mm -hmm. therapy, Mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, I don't need this anymore. And then I just stopped all of it. And I know some people, I guess it is physically addicting, but I don't even, I don't crave it anymore. And I, I don't think I ever really did. I was just like, Oh, I can't eat. I can't eat. I can't eat. Yeah. So you think you just had, you just had, it sounds like the willpower to stop. Yeah. And I think I just had, yeah. And I recognized like the mental issues that I had to deal with. And Mm -hmm. once I started working through those, it's like, oh, well, this is really unhealthy for me and I don't need to do it. Right. And I'm not craving it and I'm only doing it because of this. So I stop. I have no willpower, which is probably why I am such a fat bitch. <laughs> I, You're also not fat. I literally, bless you for saying that. I, um, when I was in high school, though, I was super athletic. And even after mm-hmm. in college and everything, I was really athletic. I ran a lot. I played a lot of sports. I was a cheerleader. I was the best cheerleader and um, (laughs) suck it high school friend. (laughs) And um, uh, then I I got married and we got comfortable and we started Mm -hmm. eating out all the time. We started drinking all the time. And it was just like uh, a downward spiral. And then before I knew it, I was like, oh, my God, what has happened to me? And then I'm like, I'm going to just get healthy and lose weight. And then I'd be like, oh, fuck, this is hard. Yeah. Pass me the pizza. Yeah. And um, I never and then I got pregnant with Chan and I've never, never, never been able to like get back to that pre-baby chub (laughs) (laughs) pre-baby which is different than the post-baby fat yeah Uh, it truly is but um yeah like back to the weed smoking stuff I we do have a lot of friends that do that and I just never I've never really been addicted to anything I've never like smoked cigarettes I think I've tried weed like maybe a handful of times yeah um, oh my God, don't tell my mom. Um, <laughs> don't nobody does. No, no I never mom. smoked. <laughs> no, never, mom. I don't have any tattoos either. L- lies. Um, but yeah, I never really felt, I know, I don't have an addictive type personality. So I think that some people maybe who do or can re- easily yeah. get into cigarettes or weed or yeah. all that stuff, drinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all of that stuff is, you know, mood stabilizers too. And it makes you feel good. Yeah. But Kai started smoking for anxiety and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's definitely helped. And he's really? not like a wake and baker. Yeah, he's got a vape pen. Yeah, um, but it's definitely helped. Yeah, for sure. So so I think it me. just depends. I don't know. Yeah. That's not something I would ever think to do. Like I had struggle enough with like trying to focus on my day to day stuff, like getting Chan yeah. up, getting her fed, keeping her alive. Yeah. Throughout the day. Like, yeah. I can't imagine. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, I know there are some moms who probably do. I'm sure there's a lot yeah. of moms who do, but I, it's just not something I can do. Yeah. I, I thought about it. Um, I tried it out a little bit cause I just had a back surgery and I was, and previous to that, I was just like, I was on Vicodin and Norco and all these things yeah. trying to maintain the pain and stuff. And it was just like, all right, well, this Norco is working for two hours at a time and that's it. Yeah. So Let's try something that's not going to destroy my liver and yeah, you know, yeah. knock me out and make me crazy. So I tried a couple of like edibles and mm-hmm. different it help? things. No. Oh, no. No. I think it does help some people with the pain, but mm-hmm. to me it just sort of like accentuated it. I think um, it's obviously been proven that there are medicinal benefits to yeah. marijuana. And it's really interesting to me that of the states are starting to slowly mm-hmm. start like allowing it to be legal. Because I think of all the drugs, everyone says marijuana is, come on, marijuana is like the easiest. Yeah. Or the, the and least And it's like, come harmful. on, like people are doing Oxycontin like every, know. Um, you know, like crazy. And drunk driving kills more people than, than marijuana. Any, like, yeah. Yeah. Than marijuana ever did. So. Did you see that, um, that story? Maybe it was date. I think it was Dateline where they talked to those families with, um, kids that had epilepsy and how Mm -hmm. um marijuana is helping their kids Mm -hmm. with their seizures and stuff like that um i feel like i did maybe see something huge i mean like it was huge for some of those families because it was like well i don't want my kid to keep going through this you know for the rest of their life how miserable yeah Mm -hmm. and once they started like on a certain kind of edible or strain or something like most of them their seizures were totally knocked out like yeah they just didn't have them anymore. it is incredible it, well i mean it's a natural substance i know they can mm. grow different different strains of it and like add chemicals yeah. to it i mean whatever they're trying to get from their buzz or whatever but yeah. it is a natural 
naturally occurring plant on the earth yeah and uh, so everyone smoke weed so everyone <laughs> get your hopefully you're already high by this point in the show Ooh. uh our jokes will be a lot funnier yeah um but if not do it now <laughs> why not start now um speaking of weed where do you think there's a lot of pot smoking going on at comic-con do the nerds um, smoke a lot of weed? No, I know. I know do you there's feel a like, lot of drinking. A lot of drinking? Yeah. But do you feel like, though, that's another one of those things with the geek culture, the nerd culture, um, like sports, where they, like, don't really do drugs. Like, we're just all about World of Warcraft and, you know, our nerdy things where they just don't do drugs. Perhaps. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't really paid attention, but I don't think I've ever really encountered, like, people passing blunts at parties high and nerd. stuff. Yeah, There's, like, you know, like, are getting high. it's all like, let's have some drinks, you know? Like, I think that maybe it happens, like, a, with the celebs at Comic-Con. Yeah, probably. How was that, by the way? You just, Claudia, you just got back from Comic-Con and um, um, with Geek Girl. good. Authority. I have to say, you know, I walked the floor at one point it was and i didn't feel no i mean there were yeah obviously there's a lot of people there they sold out again but i didn't feel mm -hmm. like totally claustrophobic like i usually do i usually have a really hard time at this point like mm -hmm. if i just want to shop for stuff yeah but i remember I, when we went i couldn't we could not walk yeah, the floor that it was year was in like shoulder to shoulder like get out of here what it was the weirdest thing, and and I just wanted to go and like check out the vendors and yes. see what everyone's offering because it I was like our to first see new time. Artists and like what yeah. they're doing and uh, uh, artists that I've known, but yeah, I actually had a friend take pictures. He was like, there was like an empty space, like in the center wow. of the floor. And he took pictures. He was like, there's no one. Like <laughs> when was it? Like on Saturday or did, was it yeah. during the Star Wars panel? Because that's where Star Wars panel was. was Friday night. Oh, okay. Um, which I didn't. Uh, I, there was a big um, surprise um, yeah, where they I took heard. them all to the Star Wars concert. And I guess Kevin Smith's panel was right after that. Oh, no. <laughs> and he was, was he like, pissed? guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I still think, I think he said he still had like 2,000 people in there. But for wow. Hall H, which is ginormous, uh -huh. that's still, he was like, I think he was like, so it was like a quarter full. What but was Kevin like, Smith pim uh, pimping? What was he promoting? Um, I can't even his remember. Podcast. Probably his podcast and like, you know, if he's doing other movies or something, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Because I'm like, I feel like he hasn't done much else lately, yeah. right? Or maybe I'm just a total asshole and missed it. But. I think he's been doing stuff regularly, but mm -hmm. I don't know if he... Kevin, I'm, we're available to him be on your podcast. Kevin Smith. If you would like to talk to yeah, us yeah, about Do your... my podcast too. Let's <laughs> do pull cats. We'll pull we'll something. We'll, or just we want to hang out we just want to hang out kevin it's fine we're not skinny um, supermodels but we can pretend like we are yeah we, we can act we're like we're like pretty british for british people right <laughs> <laughs> we're, the, we're the beautiful <laughs> we're the hot versions of the british actors <laughs> um <laughs> assholes <laughs> uh i i've been seeing everyone's tweets and like watching them at the comic con it looks like a lot of fun but it's just not something like after going that time a few years ago i just was like too many fucking people here. Yeah. It just, I wasn't that wowed by the panels where I'm like, yay, I'm watching I'm you stand in line. For yeah. This. You stand yeah. in line for hours to hear someone yeah. talk for 30 minutes about their show when you could just watch the highlights on, you e. can watch it online and then like, yeah. you know, um, Lionsgate was streaming it and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So you don't have to, there's so much offsite stuff this year though. It was, that was kind of cool. Drawing people away. From, yeah. From like, you know, well they're, they set up Petco park. Um, so it's geek and sundry, the Nerdist, Nerd mm -hmm. HQ, um, Amy Poehler's Smart Girls, and they that, have yeah. like a lot of activities and stuff going on, so you can go hang out there. I mean, I think so there was something like... you almost don't even need to get tickets yeah, to Comic-Con anymore totally to go. You can totally just go down there and hang out. Is all that stuff free? Um, most of it is. There's wow. other stuff that's not, but yeah, most of it is. And for the first time this year, there was a music and comedy festival called BAMF, mm. and... Um, Badass music festival, oh, like that. awesome! But they had a really great setup. In was it in the gas lamp area? Um, it was um off a little bit. So if you were were at the convention center and you took a right and you just kept walking all the way down, oh. walk past the cheesecake, it was behind that. Oh, I see. But they set it up really nicely. You could see the water behind you. Cool. And they had like really great, you know, names for Bands. your nerd, you know, your nerdiness, like the Nerf Herders, Paul and Storm, like all these. You know, Joseph Scrimshaw is a stand up. Um, like all these mm -hmm. these great acts and. Um, they had a free beer garden. Uh, what? what? 
free beer yeah. gutter? That's unheard of. Carl Strauss, too. It wasn't just Nothing like, here's some free. Modellos <laughs> for free. Got here's some Coors yeah. Light. Yeah, so it was her first year, so hopefully Nothing it gets bigger free. and better. That's because amazing. Yeah, because I think that's a great idea, too. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, if I want to go outside and just like hang out on the lawn and watch some music and some comedy... That's oh, wow. a great little to get away from the crowd. You know, I'd like to go again, maybe when Channing's a little bit older and take her just because we um, we went to Legoland a few weeks ago yeah. and they have, you've probably never been, I don't know if you've ever been to Legoland, no, not but yet. they have this whole area set up in, it's called Miniland and it's I've their mini of versions Miniland. of like, it's, they have a whole Star Wars area. Yeah. They have every major scene from the Star Wars movies like Hoth. Oh, wow. Um, so it's like a whole like frozen ice yeah. thing, but it's all made out of Legos. And they've got like the little ships. So cool. Um, and they've got like Adap, you know, yeah. like Does she the love miniature it? size. She loved, she did love walking around seeing everything, but she really loved the, as you walk into Lego land, um, to the mini land area, they have all the characters there, like Yoda, Luke, Han, oh, cool. Chewie, um, Leia. They have them all in like miniature Lego, um, but they were like her size oh. miniature. So they weren't like teeny tiny, but yeah. they were like a little bit bigger. And she ran up to like Yoda <laughs> And goes, oh, awesome. And Chris literally teared up and he's like, oh my God, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and I was like, calm down, nerd. On that note, have you guys shown her any of the movies or has she ha- like happened to see them or? No, not yet. Which is why it was so surprising that she like ran so up connected. to Yoda yeah. and was like, awesome. And then she went up to Luke and was like, awesome. And grabbed oh. his lightsaber and she goes, what's this? And daddy was like, like that's oh. a lightsaber. That's a, that's a conversation. <laughs> We'll have to talk about that. He was so, like, just, like, proud. And so, like, they had a Death Star that was there. So he took her and we, like, uh, she was just pointing at it and was asking questions. And he was so excited to, to tell her all about it and show it off to her a little bit. So I think, you know, we'll show them to her eventually. I think right now she wouldn't really get it. But yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. We took her to see Inside Out and she loved that. But <gasps> Did I think, she? yeah, she was real quiet the whole time. But because it was her first time in a movie. Oh. So she was sitting there just eating her popcorn, just like watch it. But she got really um, into the emotional side of it. She got really sad at one oh. point. And then we were like, should we go? You know, but then we wanted her to see the resolution yeah, and not yeah, yeah. feel like she missed out on, yeah. you know, the happy feeling at the yeah. end. Yeah. To see that they were okay. Yeah. But no, she really felt, you could see she felt a connection to the Star Wars stuff. And Chris was so excited. He's like, I can't wait to show her these movies. Are you going to show her all of them? Or are you going to go through even like the bad ones, which kids love? You mean like the newer ones? Yeah. The bad ones. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think we'll obviously we'll start with the original ones um, mm-hmm. first because I don't know. Even though it's so supposedly out of sequence, if we do it that way, yeah. you just got to well, show that's how we got it. She watched E.T. the other day. Oh. It just happened to be on and she was watching it and she got really sad because E.T. <gasps> yeah, wanted to go home. Yeah, that's a sad movie. Oh and Chris my God. was like, I think we should change it. I think we should change it. She's getting really upset because it's the part where the um, space guys come in and they're oh, like, and he looks the really house. sick. And he's really yeah, sick. He yeah, he looks all that. I, I have So we turned it off that. then because she was getting really sad and I was like, oh God, we're such asshole parents. But I've just forgot that that part is so sad and easy. Yeah. Um, but she goes, he wants to go home. He wants to go <laughs> he home. He does. I know. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to show her the ending. <laughs> I know. I'm like, and he never made it. Ooh, <laughs> what an died. asshole. <laughs> Your mom's an asshole. She's going to be an adult talking to, about E.T. to somebody. I'm like, I yeah, know. he just died. Like, no. 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 He didn't. They didn't, he lived. They didn't show you the He actually went rest. to space again. <laughs> went back home. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely show her that one again. And we'll definitely go through the Star Wars and the Star Trek and mm. the newer Star Trek movies, which. Uh, look awesome I didn't I think the new Star Wars movie looks pretty good too the trailer I think it looks great I don't know yeah. if you've watched um at the at the panel they showed like a behind the scenes yeah real we, Chris made me watch it like nine <sighs> times God, I was so like good. yeah 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 I get it I know I will I was just like man practical effects that phrase mm-hmm. is just such a turn on now because mm-hmm. you know they didn't use hardly any of that for yeah. the last three prequels yeah and it just looks like, you know, it just seems like it has the same feel to it. As the originals. Yeah. 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 It does look pretty good. I just want to know, like, what is the story, mm-hmm. you know? And who are these kids? Like, I kept asking Chris, like, now, who is this? Is this Anakin? Like, who is, Mm-mm. who are, who are these people? <laughs> like, who are, what is this story about? Well, it's going to be 30 years after the princes, like, the, uh, after, Leia after Jedi. Yeah. 
after Jedi. So that's oh, why they're all older and they're they are playing themselves oh, in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is it their kids? Is it this? Is it that? You know, like yeah. we'll see, you know. I don't know. I mean there's there's so many rumors and I just sort of like let the rumors be and yeah. I'm like I just I just wanna go in just and just go and like, enjoy it. Chris reads all the spoilers. Yeah, I know. I don't I try to and I'm then trying. he gets mad. He's like, oh, I already knew that was going to happen. And I'm like, yeah. well, why did you read it? Yeah. Why did you just put the computer down? Walk I don't, away. I know. I don't mind spoilers for some things, but like for Star Wars, I just want to like keep it safe. Be surprised. And, like, you know, I don't mind like the surprise of this is who this person is playing. You know, yeah. like when Adam Driver and Gwendolyn Christie, like Gwendolyn Christie, I'm a tall person. So I just sort of naturally gravitate to looking for tall actresses out sure, there. Sure, sure. Support the tall actresses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tall too. What are you? Five, five, eight, five, five ten. Nine? You're five ten. I'm five eight. And, and Gwendolyn Christie is six two, six three, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, if you don't know her, she's on Game of Thrones. She's Brianna Tarf, and then she's oh, going to be amazing. Captain Phasma, the stormtrooper in the new Star Wars movie, and she just looks badass. She is I love badass. it. Um, are spoilers something you cover on Geek Girl? Yeah, Party? yeah. You do spoilers. Yeah, we do. What I are mean, you gonna- we do rumors and stuff like that, but. Um, and I'm supposed to do more because I was like, I'm not going to do them because I don't want to yeah, talk yeah. about rumors, but you know, I get people want to hear it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I guess, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put more out there and I'm just like, unless something is like, you know, variety is saying that this is a rumor or Hollywood mm-hmm. reporter is saying this is a rumor. Usually it's like, okay, those people are probably in talks about something and then yeah. I, I'm more so do and that. Are you going to, do you like call sources yourself or do you sort of re do you just repost other I use everything or you just sort of yeah but you write all of your own original stuff right for the site um for yeah. the most part for the most part you know yeah. and obviously cite things if i use it for yeah. everybody else but yeah and you yeah. pull from fans like on twitter everything. and everything yeah. so that's why people it's really important go to geekgirlauthority.com yeah. interact with claudia yeah, talk to Aud- us yeah send us questions or send audrey. us things like yeah audrey yeah. kearns at audrey kearns yeah yeah. Um, so interact with them, send them questions mm-hmm. and like stuff you want to talk about yeah. and all of that stuff. And I know Claudia will get it and respond to you guys totally. for sure. So make sure yeah. you do that and make sure you follow her on Twitter too. It's Claudia Dolph, right? Yeah. At Claudia Dolph, at Claudia Dolph, all, all across the board. And then, um, it's geek girl off mm-hmm. for Twitter because no, there's too dicks, many characters. Those dicks won't let us put in, <laughs> write essays for our Twitter <laughs> handles. They wouldn't let me do the full motherhood in Hollywood. So now it's Twitter at MIH podcast. So, uh, make sure you go and follow me on there as well. Thank you so much for Thanks coming for on my me. show. I fun. feel like we could keep talking about a lot of geek I stuff. Know. That, that's super nerdy, right? Cause we didn't even delve into our, like fully our love of next generation. Yeah. Can we just do a show where we just talk about <gasps> next generation? we could yeah will you come back on and we'll just talk about it yeah I we could do like a whole podcast. like a whole podcast just dedicated watch. to just next just generation dedicated to william Riker, my oh love. my god he's so dreamy he i was such a will wheaton fan though really oh yes yeah, see i was Riker, man i was just like oh jonathan frakes someday i will love you i was a will wheaton fan and until i met him and then i was like oh <laughs> i'm an asshole <laughs> I'm a total <laughs> asshole, but I was like, nope, I chose well. I, it's a good thing I didn't hold out for you, Did Will. you tell him that? Like, nope. You know what? I was just like. I picked the right man. Nice to be you. <laughs> Gotta go. Um, he is very scrawny. No, I mean, he's a lovely person. <laughs> I'm such an asshole. He's a nice guy. <laughs> he's a very nice guy. He's just way too liberal for me. I'm like, good for you. Oh, really? Yeah, he's way too <laughs> liberal for me. And I'm like, not that I'm like crazy right wing or whatever. Right She's now. She's crazy right wing. I'm crazy. Guys. I'm from Oklahoma. It's required. You know yeah. that. <laughs> you know that. You're from She's Texas. like the Ann Coulter of Burbank. <laughs> I basically am. <laughs> That's awful. That is a horrible <laughs> thing to say. I'm she the, is nuts. She's nuts. Um, Ann Coulter is batshit crazy. Um, I'm saying that. Because she's too crazy. She's too skinny. Yeah. She's too skinny. Um, so, yes. So, follow us on Twitter. What the hell are we talking about? Oh, Star, yeah. Trek, Star Trek. We need to do a Yeah, we generation. need to talk about the generation. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Um, so, come back on the show sometime and we'll talk about that. Right. And then maybe we'll, like, develop our own podcast for That'd next so generation. fun. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would so do that. I still, to this day, if I see an episode uh, on Spike, I'll just watch it. It's it's on Netflix. Like, oh, I know this one. I go th- I binge watch it all the time. So great. Um... I'm going to say, I had a question, but I'm going to save it for the, for, the, for the Generations <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, I love it. The I'm Generations it. podcast. Yeah. Nobody steal our Don't idea. you steal this, bastards. If I see it on iTunes, I'll kill you. Kill you. We'll be tweeting the hell out of you. Yeah. 
<laughs> death tweets. Um, so yes, thank you for coming on for sure. And then come back. Me. Everybody go follow Claudia on Twitter and check out geekgirlauthority.com. <laughs> also, don't forget to give us a rating, the Motherhood in Hollywood podcast. Give us a rating on iTunes and a review. You will be entered to win our special Honest Company uh, bundle and a Motherhood in Hollywood tote bag. I love Honest Company. Isn't it great? Yeah, it's, I get the bundles. I love the bundles and it's I um, use it for Chan. It's the only thing I use for her like for bath yeah. time and hand soap and stuff like that um i don't know i just feel like if i'm gonna do something natural on her it might as well be something that's been proven and tested yeah. and all of that i'm not a huge like natural yeah, lover but you don't want to poison your kid yeah and i i don't know i we were raised on like regular old hand soap and you know dove and irish spring and all that so i'm sure it can't be all that terrible we won't know until we find out in 10 years if we have cancer or something right <laughs> but eh, i might as well just so get her off on yes. the right track. Start her off on the right yeah. track is the best way to say that. So, um, so yeah, as a special thank you to the people who give us a rating review on iTunes, I'm giving away a bath time bundle and a motherhood in Hollywood tote bag. What? Nice. It's pretty totes. fabulous. It's totes cool. It's totes cool. So you want to make sure you do that. <laughs> also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at MAH Podcast and go to motherhoodinhollywood.com for the latest updates. And in honor of poll cats and my guest today, Claudia, I'm doing a special poll. <gasps> what? On the website it's going to be who are your i have a list of five who are your favorite um who is your favorite sci-fi superhero lady like female superhero so i'm going to list five choices for everyone to choose from everyone from seven of nine nice I'm kind of impartial to Dr. Crusher. Is that nerdy? I love Beverly Crusher. Her hair is gorgeous. gorgeous. But you're a redhead, too. Yeah, that's, that's true. Why. But also, she's a doctor in space. Yeah. Like, yeah. a lady doctor in space. Yeah. Like, that's pretty hard to do, I would imagine. I don't know. In the future. <laughs> Maybe in the future, everyone's going to do Maybe it's super easy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, but there will be several choices to choose from. I'd love to hear what you guys uh, have to say about that in honor of my poll cats Yay. guest today. Yay. So, nice. um, thanks so much for listening, everybody. And, uh, thank you again, Claudia for coming on. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you guys next week. Mama funny. Balls.